Good afternoon, dear friends, and welcome to this Holy Mass of Friday, the 22nd week in ordinary time. In today's Mass, I'll be offering prayers for you. Pray for your families and pray for all those you hold dear in your heart. Today, I also offer prayers for my mother who celebrates her birthday today. Ask for God's blessings of good health, of grace, and longevity. Pray also for all others who celebrate today for their, as their birthdays or anniversaries. Ask that God may grant them graces in accordance with their needs. Pray for those who are sick. Pray for those who are distressed. Pray for those who are alone. Pray for those who have an abandoned children, young people, singles who live alone. Pray for people who are in desperate need. But above all, let us continue to pray for racial justice, for economic justice, for justice in any other form that is being violated around the world. Pray especially for the oppressed. Let us go to God with the song, City of God. City of God. Awake from your slumber. Arise from your sleep, a new day is dawning for all those who wait. The people in darkness have seen a great light, the Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build a city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, give out of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what, what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever, and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, those should one regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Now it is of course required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. It does not concern me in the least that I am judged by you or by any human tribunal. I do not even pass judgment on myself. I am not conscious of anything against me, but I do not thereby stand acquitted. The one who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, do not make any judgment before the appointed time, until the Lord comes, for he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness, and will manifest the motives of our hearts, and then everyone will receive praise from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the song is, the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. 
The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's request. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Commit to the Lord your way. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make justice done for you like the light, bright as the noonday shall be your vindication. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Turn from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. For the Lord loves what is just, and forsakes not his faithful ones. Criminals are destroyed, and the posterity of the wicked is cut off. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of distress. And the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked because they take refuge in him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit, reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The Pharisees and, and scribes said to Jesus, The disciples of John the Baptist fast often and, and offer prayers, and the disciples of the Pharisees do the same, but yours eat and drink. Jesus answered them, can you make the wedding guest fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come, and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. And he also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new cloak to patch an old one. Otherwise, he will tear the new and the peace from it will not match the old cloak. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled and the skins will be ruined. Rather, new wine must be poured into fresh wine skins. And no one who has been drinking old wine desires new. For he says, the old is good. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, as we come to the end of this week, I hope this was um, a good week for you. Maybe it wasn't so good, but I hope it was a hopeful week for you. A week that um, gave you reasons to stay in the battle, to stay in the fight, the week that gave you reason to trust more, to believe more, to work hard, harder, and to commit yourself more to the cause and whatever that cause is in your life. Because it is God, scripture says here, it is God who provides salvation for the just. I like to share um, reflect on two things one from the first reading and the other from the gospel reading the first is what Paul says now, this is not something we often think about that we are stewards we are stewards we often put ourselves we like to at least feel even if just for self-deceit makes us feel better when we see ourselves in a position of masters or mistresses who are supposed to be catered for, served, taken care of, we, we enjoy that. 
In fact, sometimes we even expect and feel we deserve that. Think about the last time you imagined yourself as a servant. And when I mean a servant, in the very low sense of that word, someone who is out there attending and caring and making sure everyone else in the house is okay or everyone else in the church is okay or everyone else in your family is okay. That is not the job we enjoy doing. In most cases, we do it because we have to or we do it because we paid to do it. But we will all enjoy if you can go into that restaurant and sit down and have someone bring your food and bring everything and your job is just to eat and drink and we enjoy that. We enjoy when we have to go to church and we sit on the pew and have everyone pass the collection, bring us communion, bring us the pamphlets, bring us everything else. Our job is just to be there, pray, finish, and we're gone. And the best we do, maybe we, we, we bring some offering. But there are people at the background who are providing all of those services. They are the ones who clean the church. They are the ones who sweep. They are the ones who... Um, mop the church. They are the ones who light the candles. They are the ones who wash the linens. They are the ones who make sure that the services we get every day in church are perfect, are okay. They are the ones who do the practice for singing. They are the ones who come and do the practice for the reading. They are the ones who take the training as altar servers, as uh, lectors, or as Eucharistic ministers. They are the ones who are doing all of They are the stewards who recognize their role as stewards. But maybe your job is not to do that in church. Maybe your job is as a teacher, as a nurse, as a mother, as a father, as a student. But what Paul says here, or as a priest, that every one of us who bears the name of Christ as Christian must see himself or herself as a steward. That means one with a, with a vocation for service. A vocation to serve so if you are a teacher you are the servant and your teachers are your masters or mistresses if you are a nurse you are the servant you are the steward and your patients are your bosses your masters and your mistresses if you are a priest you are the servant the steward and your bosses are members of your parish or members of your church community. And you must have that in the back of your mind and realize that your job there is to provide service. And it must be, it must be reasonable. It must be uh, sustainable. And it must be serviceable. You must make sure that all that you provide has meaning and has value for those you serve. I don't know how many of us priests go into church every day and look at our parishioners as our masters and our mistresses. If we did, we would have more regard, we would have more respect, we would speak to them in a way that accords or shows them that they are truly our bosses, they are our employees. It is for their reason that we wear this. That's not what we do. We don't even listen to their concerns. We don't even care what they think. We just give them or dole out to them what we think is right for them. And today, Paul is calling us, whether as priests, as parents, whatever capacity that you have, that you must learn to see yourself as a steward. That means the people who are beneficiaries of your services are indeed your masters and your mistresses. You don't boss it around them. They do. They are your clients. They determine how you function. And I'm looking for a day when our church will master and carry on this, um, this model, this business model that makes sense. Where we begin to see our parishioners as the people who really determine how we serve and do it for their good and do it for the good of the family. So whether you are a teacher, a police officer, whatever capacity, once you learn 
and, and judge your role in this sense, suddenly it changes the way you do everything you do. And suddenly you realize the results and the, out, the, the, results and the output will be different. So Paul is saying something very important here. Begin to see yourself today as a steward. And that means you must be trustworthy, he says. As stewards, we must be found trustworthy. That means we must be found accountable for what is entrusted to us. We should be able to give an appropriate account for what we do. So we pray, dear friends, that God may help us to do this. And secondly and finally, from the gospel reading, Jesus tells us that no one tears a piece of an old cloak and have to patch the new one. Now, I don't know if that's true, that no one will do that because I know some people do it. But the reason why Jesus says this, I think he should have qualified it. No one, no reasonable person does that. But that tells us how unreasonable we are in most cases. We, we are willing to tear a new cloak that we bought to patch an old one. No one does that. No, one, no reasonable person should do that. That's what the Lord is saying here. However, there are too many people who do stuff like this. We want to make sure we bring our old way of life and live in the new family of God as though nothing has changed. No, that doesn't work with God. God expects us to change who we are. If we expect him to do something new, something fresh, something marvelous, something exceptional in our lives, we must first of all prepare ourselves and make ourselves reliable receptacles of the new graces that we expect. You cannot stay the old self and expect God to do the new thing in your life. It doesn't work that way. Jesus says God doesn't even do that. Even in his graciousness, he will not do that. So is there something you're asking for in your life right now? Prepare for it. Do change, change the things that need to be changed in your life. Make yourself worthy of what you're asking God for. And when you do that, conversely, what Jesus is saying is, if you are able to prepare this new yourself as a new vessel, God will throw, will pour new wine into that vessel. But if you can't make yourself new, there is no way God is going to do that. He will not. That would, that would be waste. And God does not waste his graces. So we pray, dear friends, that God may help us recognize the areas in our lives that we need to renew. The things in our lives that we need to change just so we are ready receptacles for the graces and the blessings of the Almighty God. So always, dear friends, I'd like to remind you that you are the delight of Almighty God. God loves you very much. Let us pray. Baptized by water and the Holy Spirit, let us draw near to God with our intentions of prayer. For our Pope, our bishops, for priests and deacons who serve God's people, that we may recognize our role in this family as servants, as stewards of the many mysteries of God, that are given through us for the people of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For honest and wise decision makers in finance, in industry, and in government, that public servants may recognize their calling to build a more fair, a more just, and a more equitable society for all of God's people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For adults who are seeking a new life of baptism, that they may experience the power of God's renewal in that sacrament and may live the demands of that mystery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deeper love of Jesus, the Lamb of God, offered and received daily in the Eucharist, that we may recognize the power of this sacrament, sacrament of love, inviting us to service, service to all of God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who celebrate 
anniversaries or birthdays today, especially for my mother, whose birthday is today, that God may grant them the blessings of life, of good health, and of longevity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have asked our prayers, and for people we carry every day in our hearts, that God, who knows their areas of struggle and need, may furnish them with every good grace to meet every need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all those we love and those who have passed. Pray especially for those who have passed around this very difficult time and could not be accorded the respect that they deserve. That they may feel our love as they return to God. And that God may give us grace for comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and the hour for our death. Amen. Grant this request, loving God, which we bring to you on behalf of all of your people. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made it to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. May this sacred offering will both confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lead them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. All these signs everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. The world through whom you made all things. Whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory.
with the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of this body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring our 